Uh, there was once. Well, perhaps there was more than once. Well, this is the only once I know about. Anyway, anyway. There was once a very, very poor miller who had a very, very beautiful daughter. But the miller was... <laughs> the miller was so worried about his problems that he went for a long walk one afternoon and on his walk, he happened to bump into the local king. Hello down there. Goodness me, you're common, aren't you? Yes, I am. <laughs> Thank you, your holiness. <laughs> well, would you mind lying down in that muddy puddle while I walk over you? I don't want to get my horse's booties dirty. <laughs> no, of course not, Your Honour. <laughs> Smosh! And while they were chatting away, the miller felt very small and unimportant and, and wet, lying there underneath the rich, powerful king. So, to make himself seem more important, the miller said that he had a daughter who could spin straw into gold. <laughs> oh, dear. It's always a mistake to tell lies, especially to kings, and particularly to this king, who was very fond of gold. Oh, really? said the king. Well, if your daughter is so very clever, bring her to me castle in the morning and I'll put her to the test. Well, the miller was very sorry he told such an enormous lie, but there was nothing else for it. And the next day, his daughter was brought to the king's castle. The king led her straight away to a room which was full of straw and gave her a spinning wheel. Now set to work, said the king, and if you haven't spun all this straw into gold by tomorrow morning, I'll chop off your head. <laughs> he slammed the door shut and left the girl alone. She sat still for a long time, wondering how she could avoid having her head chopped off, because, of course, she hadn't the slightest idea how to turn straw into gold. She became more and more frightened, until all she could think of doing was weeping. So she did. <laughs> all at once, the door opened and in stepped a strange little man. Oh, good evening, Mistress Miller, he said. And why do you weep so much? <laughs> Alas, she replied, I must spin this straw into gold and I don't know how to do it. I see. Well, it won't be easy, said the little man. And what will you give me if I spin it for you? <gasps> I'll, 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 give you I'll give you my necklace. Well, that will be something, I suppose. Oh, good. No, shut up. Oh, good. No, 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 no. Stop crying. Will you shut up? Stop that weeping now. I accept the cheap stringy necklace as payment. The little man took the necklace, sat in front of the spinning wheel, and started it up. And so he went on all night long. And gold began pouring out. Until all the straw was spun and the room was full of gold. By daybreak, the king was delighted and astonished when he saw the gold, but his heart only became more greedy. One room was full of gold, he said to himself. Why not two rooms full of gold? <laughs> so he had the girl locked in another room, twice the size of the first, with twice as much straw to be spun into gold, or else... <laughs> Again, the girl had no idea what to do, so she <laughs> burst into tears the moment the door was locked. But again, the little man appeared and offered to help. But, he added, I can only help if A, you give me some payment for all my trouble, and B, if you stop all that horrid crying. <laughs> nice and noisy, good ho. <laughs> An overhead camera shaft really is a strange genius. <laughs> up and out, up and out. Come on, action gold. There we go. Whoa, super! Again, the king was delighted, but he still wasn't satisfied. He led the girl to a room a thousand and three miles square, filled with a thousand and three tons of straw. He said, 
if you can spin all this into gold tonight, I'll make you my wife. But if not, <laughs> it's bye-bye head time for you. Out the way, out the way. Oh, Nick, hers. That was my best dressing gown. Oh, well. When the girl was left alone, the little man appeared for the third time and said, Now, this might be difficult. Oh, yes, indeed, what a difficult amount of straw. What will you give me if I do all this for you? Alas, said the girl, I've nothing left that I can give you. <laughs> well, in that case, he replied, and stop that. That's more than enough weeping for one lifetime. In that case, if you do become queen, you must give me your firstborn child. <laughs> well, who can tell if that will ever happen? The miller's daughter thought to herself, and she agreed to the little man's request. And when morning came, the king found a thousand and three tons of gold in the thousand and three square mile room. So, he married the miller's daughter straight away, and made her his queen. Well now, after a year of marriage, the queen had forgotten all about the little spinning man, until she gave birth to a beautiful child. Immediately, the little man appeared in her room and demanded that she keep her promise. The frightened queen offered him all the riches of her kingdom if he would leave with a child, but he shook his head. No, no, no! Something alive is much dearer to me than all the treasures of the world! <laughs> well, the queen began to weep and groan so much, Oh, no! Oh, please, oh, please! That the little man said, All right, all right, all right! Listen, I will let you keep your child if in three days' time you can guess what my name is. Uh, well, is your name Elizabeth, the Queen said. No, no. Uh, <laughs> Lizzie. No. <laughs> Balthazar. <laughs> Sid. <laughs> Rosie. <laughs> Myrtle. The Queen went through all the names she knew, but each time the little man danced about, shaking his head and shouting, that's not my name. <laughs> On the second day, the Queen sent a messenger through all the country, far and wide, to collect new and unusual names. She tried them all on the little man. Perhaps your name is uh, Rotting Radishes. Uh, or Donkey Breath. Uh, no, Cinderella. Oh, no, that's a different story. Uh, but at every name, he cried out, That's not my name. <laughs> on the third day, the Queen had sent her messenger even further and wider looking for names. But now it was getting very late. Almost time for the little man to come for the last time. And still the messenger had not returned. <laughs> the Queen sighed and watched the window. She worried, and her blood ran cold as she saw the sun begin to go down. But then, at last, the messenger came home. Did he have any names? <laughs> I'm not sure, he said. But as I searched, I came to a high mountain near the edge of a forest where foxes and hares say good night to each other. May I? And in this place, I saw a little house. By its front door, a fire was burning. And round this fire, a really ridiculous little man was dancing on one leg and shouting, Today I stew, and then I'll bake. Tomorrow I shall, the Queen's child take. Oh, how glad I am that nobody knows that my name is Rumpelstiltskin. Well, you can imagine how pleased the Queen was when she heard the name. But what a stupid song. Anyway, only minutes after she had found out, the little man came in and asked, now, Mistress Queen, what is my name? The Queen thought for a moment and said, uh, Is it Barry? No, that's not my name. <laughs> is it uh, Kevin? <laughs> Close. Right. Last chance. Well, perhaps your name is Rumpelstiltskin. <gasps> the devil has told you that. The devil has told you. <laughs> Sweet little man. And he stamped his left foot so hard on the ground that he couldn't pull it off again. Then, in a blood-boiling rage, he took hold of his left leg with both his hands and pulled away so hard that he tore himself in two. And that was the end of him. <laughs> well, Rumpelstiltskin would never bother her again. <laughs> but the Queen had one more name to think of. A name for her beautiful baby, who was now safe and hers forever. And she was so relieved that she had saved her baby, she named it Phew. Ha, 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 ha. Serves you right for being nasty.